The Israeli War Cabinet has just decided that there must be a response. In fact, there is now a unanimous agreement that there will be an Israeli response to the Iranian retaliatory strikes or attempted strikes against Israel. Keep in mind that these responses from Iran came in reaction to Israel striking a portion of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, the capital of Syria. Syria, mind you, is uh, basically the only regional ally that Iran has. That's not ideal. Its next closest allies are Russia and China, which were, by the way, part of the 2015 nuclear arms deal or enrichment deal with Iran, where Iran agreed to give up 97% of its uranium. But obviously, while Russia and China were in partnership at that point, now, while Russia and China are arguing that Israel and Iran should chill with tensions, is, really what you're finding is China, Russia, and Iran have been associated with a bit more of, dare I say, an axis of resistance. And that's what foreign policy experts are calling this situation now, an axis of resistance. Why? Well, you've got now China, who previously said they wouldn't provide lethal weapons to Russia in its fight against Ukraine reportedly providing lethal weapons and ammunitions to and ammunition rather uh, to Russia for its fight in Ukraine you've got Russia buying uh, thousands of drones like the S131s and the 136s from Iran which Iran just put on a sales display for the entire world to see how absolutely miserably pathetic they were in their attack against uh, Israel. Now, there are many people who say, ah, this wasn't meant to do any damage. Let's just be real. This was an embarrassment by Iran. They are clearly weaker than we thought. However, this was expensive. Uh, this counterattack or sort of this, this defense against Iran coordinated between the United States, Israel, and uh, Great Britain probably cost between one to $1.3 billion. Now, in update three video, since this is the Monday morning update four video, we did talk about how interesting and neat it might be if we end up getting uh, angles showing uh, if fighter jets coming behind some of these piston-fueled drones or, or driven drones that fly about 120 to 150 miles an hour uh, and, and seeing them sort of get mowed down by the 25 millimeter cannons that are on board the F-35s or the F-22s, which often had 20 millimeter cannons. That, that, that would be an interesting angle in that it would be much more expensive if they decided to use rockets. Well, uh, at least, or missiles rather, at least in the footage that we have here, uh, you could see no... We're not using the machine guns. We are using heat-seeking missiles. Now, this is pretty freaking cool footage. Keep in mind, no human lives were lost in this footage since these are unmanned drones that were being attacked. But you could clearly see the shape of one of those 131 drones here just getting locked on by heat-seeking missiles and taken out. Here's another one. You could clearly see those vertical stabilizers in the back, very uh, reminiscent of what you expect uh, for the 131s and... And uh, that's a 131 right here with the vertical stabilizers up but not down. The 136, the larger, faster versions, have the lower stabilizers as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, this some pretty awesome footage here. This is a different kind of uh, attack here. But anyway, some pretty intense footage. And the reality is war is intense. But not only is it ex uh, intense, it is also expensive. And, and now concerns are that Israel is convinced they are going to respond. Keep in mind, Iraq uh, and the Iraqi prime minister argues they are in full partnership with Washington and the United States. The United States is fully committed to defending Israel's defensive maneuvers, but refuses to coordinate with Israel on a counterattack against Iran. Israel is now looking for options. They're talking, well, they're obviously the leadership is requesting the IDF provide target options to, quote, send a message to Iran not to do this again. Iran, of course, is responding to this saying, we will respond to any IDF response with a stronger and immediate reaction compared to the response we sent last time. That's, that could be saber rattling. It could be a way of Iran saying, oh yeah, well, well that was just a sample of what you have, you or what we have. We, we may have shot down 99.9% .9 of what you have, but, but that was just a sample, okay? We got life insurance that Kevin always talks about. 
that that is true. I do generally pitch a couple things on the channel, like that coupon code expiring this Friday on the programs on building your wealth. Those are my programs. We've got a lot more stuff coming out this weekend. Real estate, stocks, uh, finance, wealth, entrepreneurship, you name it. Great programs over at meetkevin.com. And then, of course, you can get life insurance if any of this stuff makes you nervous. Metkevin.com slash life. It's what Apple, uh, it's what Lauren and I use. You can Apple pay, Android pay for it. It's great. Uh, and, and check that out. Metkevin.com slash life. It's also linked down below. But the IDF is looking for options right now. They're not looking to cause death, they say, and casualties, uh, which could be injuries as well. But they are looking to send a very clear message to Iran. Do not do this. Joe Biden's point of view was, look, why escalate anymore? Uh, everybody's sort of in agreement in the region. Like, you don't need to escalate anymore. Israel, we helped you out with intel intelligence. The entire coalition of the Middle East helped Israel with intel to try to de-escalate the situation because nobody really wins from having more uh, of a disastrous confrontation in the Middle East. So everybody's hoping cooler heads prevail and you've got Rishi uh, Sunak from the United Kingdom and Joe Biden really pushing Israel to just declare victory here. You do not need to do this. We do not need to respond. Declare victory. You defended it. They threw a rock. You dodged it. We're good. You're rebuilding the portions of the airport that were struck, like one portion of a runway was struck. Big deal. Rebuild it. Very few people hurt. Some people hurt by falling shrapnel. That's obviously not good. But uh, look, declare victory here. The Israeli uh, Air Force here mentions that, that they get a lot of information from uh, their coalition partners and uh, really their preemptive strikes against Lebanese territory, specifically against Hezbollah, were also quite useful in fending off this attack. But why go attack Iran again now? Iran had enough of an embarrassment. Leave it at an embarrassment. Well, uh, a lot of folks on the internet, of course, are claiming that, well, this was really Iran versus the United States and uh, the United Kingdom. They likely shot down most of these drones or otherwise. Uh, but uh, keep in mind, uh, Israel is the only state in the Middle East so far that's bought Lockheed Martin F-35 jets. Those are some of the costliest weapon systems to ever exist. And Tehran is still using some pretty old crap, I hate to say it. Uh, they're using some old jets back from the Iranian uh, revolutions. They've got some S-300 air defense systems from Russia. Uh, these aren't battle-tested against uh, Israel's defenses. And quite frankly, these weapons have been used to accidentally shoot down passenger aircrafts before. Uh, that had la latest was a Ukrainian passenger aircraft in 2020. Uh, and... Uh, just doesn't look good. Like, Iran doesn't really look like they have their act together, right? Uh, it's but, but Israel likely is going to respond within the next 24 hours with some form of targeted strikes against Iran, and that does risk escalating issues more. Now, we'll talk market impact in a moment. Uh, both Israel and Iran also have cyber warfare uh, capabilities. We know that. But we do have more lobs coming from outside forces, considered... Just yesterday, the IDF confirmed the interception of a, quote, suspicious aerial target entering the Israeli airspace. It was uh, suspected to be a drone that was launched from Yemen, so likely from the Houthis. And uh, their response here actually came from a ship-mounted Iron Dome system known as the Sea Dome. Now, the Sea Dome is actually really interesting because... The Sea Dome uh, sits aboard a four six-class Corvette ships, uh, nicknamed SAR ships. Uh, these are roughly around half a billion dollar German-made warships. It's also a little bit of irony there, German-made warships, but whatever. There are four of them that exist. Uh, one, for example, might carry a 76 millimeter main primary gun. These are like your turrets in the front. Uh, usually a couple 25 millimeter cannons. And the Sea Dome really went into activation in 2017. It's kind of like the Iron Dome, but it's fully self-contained to a ship, uh, which is really neat because these ships have uh, 40x uh, vertical launch bays where they can launch uh, basically uh, 40 different interceptor rockets. They cost about $100,000 a piece. They're much cheaper than the Patriots that run like two to $3 million a piece. Which is great because, quite frankly, the United States is basically funding all of this defensive ammunition anyway. Uh, so, uh, pretty cool that they have these mobile sort of sea domes at sea. And when we say they're fully self-contained, it's really because you, you can uh, uh, fire and uh, uh, 
lock on to targets and track targets with radar using just the ship, not being required to use any kind of land-based radar. Uh, now, you do also have a lot of reservists in Israel that, uh, quite frankly, now walk around armed in Israel. Uh, honestly, after what happened uh, in, in southern Israel by the attack from Hamas, you can't really blame this. But the Guardian did uh, some pictures here. They had, they had sort of a piece on uh, the... Uh, uh, open carry of uh, individual Israelis walking around different parts of Israel, uh, basically living their lives carrying weapons. You might not be familiar with this. This is why I wanted to show it, but you can see here's a couple having beer and you've got an individual sitting here with uh, with his rifle. You've got, somebody's got a, a balloon tied to his, uh, what looks like, um, uh, you, you, almost an American uh, made rifle here. Here's another one, somebody riding around on a scooter with their rifle. Uh, here's uh, someone else drinking wine with their rifle. Someone else walking with theirs. Uh, this, I, I was more distracted here, not by the rifle with scope and sidearm, but with the hat. I haven't seen that before. Maybe somebody can give me clarity on what that is. Uh, maybe it's a religious thing. I mean, based on the rest of the clothing, I'm assuming it is, but I'm not familiar with it. Here's another one. Uh, here are some females walking around with these rifles as well. This was a little interesting. You've got uh, sort of this uh, front-mounted uh, a belt holster here with underwear showing and a strap uh, attached, like sort of tethering it to his belt. Uh, here's uh, yet another. And uh, here are people just sort of basic, uh, you know, sort of normal Israelis waiting for what looks to be a train or or potentially what will eventually be a subway or hear people praying. And yeah, this has become life. I mean, this person almost, I hate to say it, but looks like they have a grenade launcher at the bottom of their rifle. So this has sort of become life in Israel right now. Very challenging uh, environment. And it's understandable based on the attacks that you've seen. A lot of these individuals who are carrying these weapons, uh, and I'm, I'm going to mess this up and I'm going to try to pronounce it, are called Milu Imnikims. Probably screwed that up, but that is my best, you know, I've tried practicing it. I'm trying here. These are basically Israeli reservists, and uh, so they have experience with the weapons that they're carrying, supposedly. Uh, so we'll see what happens now. I Iran did mention that the issue can be deemed concluded, and, uh, I you know, as long as there is no further escalation from Israel, Iran is done. Of course, now we are expecting further escalation from uh, Israel in terms of a response. Uh, so uh, very interesting that we expect more of this pain, unfortunately. If we do look at uh, markets, the biggest issue that we have with markets today uh, is that all of this drama is occurring at the same time as unfortunately, you are breaking a longer weekly trend here. You can see for about six months, we've essentially been straight up. Uh, and this is getting destroyed now. I mean, we could draw this together. It's a very simple trend line. Uh, we could draw, there we go. We've almost been perfect on this weekly trend. Breaking this is not great. It's one of the reasons we're seeing the market turn red. Bitcoin rotate down as a risk asset play. Obviously, Tesla is down 4%, but a lot of that has to do with Tesla itself regarding layoffs and uh, higher level executives leaving, some of whom were clearly not expecting to be laid off, like Rohan in his tweet replies yesterday, still acting like he was still very much a part of Tesla and then sort of getting rugged, what appears to be today. But uh, market's a little bit stressed, but not oil, interesting. Oil relatively stable as oil markets think they'll be fine in terms of oil production, that these strikes are limited and not so much affecting oil. And so you're seeing less of a move into oil. However, you are seeing bond yields rise, though that could also be driven by, uh, which ordinarily if they're a safe haven asset, you would see bond yields go down as bonds get bought and gold go up. And you're not seeing that so much right now. So while, while markets might be a little toppy in risk assets, you're not seeing a large flight to safety, so it doesn't imply that markets are really concerned about a broader kind of expansion of this issue, but we are expecting to see some tension following an additional strike by uh, Israel, which, uh, which could come sooner than expected. So stay tuned.
I'll keep you updated with updates. This is update number four. If you like these updates, uh, please hit subscribe. Uh, consider sharing them. I do my best to provide as much factual information as possible, uh, and then uh, provide you new updates as news comes out as well. If you are interested in my buy, sell, trade alerts, make sure to join me in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group, though all of the courses come with lifetime access to our course member live streams, where we talk daily when the market is open about financial analysis, questions, Q&A, real estate state analysis, you name it. Thanks so much for watching. Coupon expires this Friday and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. Why not advertise these things that you told us here? I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than HouseHack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in HouseHack to always read the PPM at HouseHack.com.